Hey guys, and welcome to another McFarlane Dragon review. Now, seems like forever since I've done one, so I wanted to review a dragon that's really cool and personally very special. Here it is. Now, this is the Series 6 Scavenger Dragon, but don't let the name fool you or put you off because already you can see how promising this dragon looks. Now, right in the box, this is a beautifully presented dragon. Uh, upright in the dead center with two wings framing the body so symmetrically and aesthetically. In fact, it's one of those rare ones you could keep in box and display beautifully. It's so full of promise that we really need to take a closer look. Now here's one that I prepared earlier. This dragon comes in four parts. Five if you count the post. You have the base, the two wings and you have the main body of the dragon. So I'll start with the main body of an animal and the first thing that strikes me is that the inspiration for this dragon is a cockatrice. A cockatrice is essentially a wyvern with a rooster's head and you see the influence and few features. Uh, for example, there are what appear to be feather-like bristles in the neck region um, you have the red-blue color that's so typical of roosters. Um, not just in the head itself, but down here, down into the back area. And finally, you even see what looks suspiciously like a wattle. Ah, but there's no comb, you say? Well, here's where the designer was really clever. Since a comb would look stupid on a dragon, they've incorporated that characteristic feature into the wattle, bad assing it up in the process. Now the head itself is very narrow and pointy, as you see here, and the detail is awesome. Um, you look underneath, underneath here and you'll see the soft palette. Look at the tongue here, it raises separately from the bottom of the mouth. and curls away from the jaw and these teeth are just sick. Now of interest is the fact that uh, the bottom teeth are longer and larger than the top. As for scales and scalation, this dragon doesn't disappoint. Now, these scales up here in the neck, I'm just trying to hold the angle just right, you can look at that. It's not just a mosaic, they are actually overlapping layers that jut out from each other. Uh, and then they slowly modify into these bristles. The way I imagine the dinosaur's uh, scales might transition into feathers. There are two swivel joints in the neck, one up here and one down here. And because of the coloration, um, when you turn the head, there isn't the obvious discontinuity the way other McFarlane dragons have. But more impressively, this one here because of these over these overlapping bristles, um, when you turn them, you won't see signs of discontinuity at all. And whichever way you turn, it looks fantastic. Like it's hunting its prey this way and that. Very nice. Um, um, down the back, the spines become really, really small. Really, really small down the length of the animal and then in the, in the tail they change and uh, interestingly enough the tail ends in what looks like a bristle brush uh, type of appearance a very blunt one now the way the legs are sculpted add marvelously to the tension now you look at the contorted limbs of the animal uh, first in the the upper limbs, the forelimbs, and then the hind limbs, they just give so much dynamism to the animal. Um, from any angle, you see curves. Every claw is in tension here. And look at the positioning of the toes. This one's here, very vicious. 
And of interest are the double claws in the last digit. I'll show it to you. Um, there, you see here this last toe actually has two claws. And likewise on this. And also, there are double knuckle spikes on each knuckle. Almost like this dragon was wearing knuckle dusters. Definitely not a dragon to be messed with. And now the wings. Now, the structure is interesting and very, very pterodactyl-like nature. Uh, it's, it's really obvious you have the two grasping claws and then this elongated last digit acting as a supporting strut. Now, these two claws are very long and very vicious looking. Uh, look a little bit skeletal too. And again, down this part of the forearm, you see the uh, bristle motif revisited. And likewise with, with this wing. The color is striking uh, because, again, it's a general gray black. You have these brilliant uh, <laughs> red highlights. And the whole effect gives me an impression of molten lava. Uh, there's a nice fade here to a dark beige color uh, where it will blend with the belly of the dragon. And even on the outside, you'll see very nice fading uh, to a lighter gray. There is nice detail in the veins here, uh, which you've come to expect from McFarlane dragons, but you get a hint of raggedness with these holes. And they're present in uh, both wings here. And this is suggestive of death and decay. So this supports the scavenger idea. As a scavenger dragon, I'm guessing that it's an animal that has come to feed in the aftermath of some disaster, perhaps war, perhaps famine. And in that respect, the base is appropriate. Uh, it's unusual uh, for depicting a human dwelling instead of the usual rocky, woody or grassy bases we've seen. Um, so you see the ruins of what was probably the, the, the corner of a house uh, with rubble scattered about. Yeah. Uh, but looks like a broken vase, uh, shattered pottery. Uh, there is nice detail in the masonry of the wall. Uh, you see the sill. Uh, the, I, I'm not sure this, I think this is called, uh, it's an extended gothic style window. The road is interesting uh, and looks distinctly Roman with these surface pavings, uh, paving stones fitting so tightly together. This might very well be after a Vesuvius type disaster. And likewise, the, um, the size of the road, very nice detail. The magic happens when you put everything together. Now, uh, these two wings are separate, so there are no constraints to how small, uh, to how, how small or how contorted they had to be uh, to fit into the clamshell, as we've seen in some other previous dragons. So when you attach them, uh, it's got a rather interesting attachment uh, system reminding me of one of the older, I think it was the Series 3 Komodo dragons. You have a uh, peg and a hole here and you also have a, a groove down which this part of the wing will fit. Um, so it will be quite secure and like I said uh, because you don't have that kind of constraint you can have a marvelously impressive spread of the wings. And really, this is just <laughs> uh, beautiful because it's, it's representative of that archetypal image of a swooping dragon. Um, you know, the arcs, the arcs in the animal, you know, and, and you appreciate this if you, if you do art as well. The arcs of the animal, you have the flows uh, of the figure. 
you know, any angle you view it, um, from any height, from below, here, from the top, um, any angle, you know, it's it's going to be it's going to be so incredible. It's so action packed, and that's really great because you can have it on a low shelf, um, on your desk, on a high ledge, and you'll always have something fantastic to look at. Now, you know, many years ago, uh, many years ago, I was in a very bad way. I'm living in a tiny room uh, with everything in boxes. And this guy was the only one I had space for on the table. And every time I looked at him, it was a reminder to strive for better days. And now he will sit proudly uh, where he belongs on my desk. And I'm sure you'll be pleased to have him on yours too. Uh, take care my friends and I'll see you again very soon.